Hey everybody and welcome to the next edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog. Today we're going to be following up on an article that I wrote and posted on my Soccer Fitness Goals written blog on Sunday, January 24th, which was titled, Why Are We Still Competing for Results? A lot of positive response to that article in the last two weeks, and that's why I thought I would follow up about it. The basic premise of the article was that Although there have been a lot of significant changes to the competition structure of different youth soccer leagues in Ontario, which have shifted an emphasis away from results, including elimination of promotion and relegation, elimination of standings, and in some cases even elimination of scores of games, there are still many coaches, parents, and players who are competing in these new leagues that are still completely focused on the results of the games rather than on player development. The problem with the competitive environment that places all of the emphasis on results, rewarding winning and punishing losing, is that it is just not conducive to player development. And the reason it's not conducive to player development is that there are many restrictions that are going to be placed on individual players motor learning abilities. So coaches coaching at any level in an environment where they are rewarded for winning and punished for losing are going to be forced to make decisions that will hamper player development by restricting individual players motor learning abilities. Among these decisions are to limit or eliminate playing time for players who are physically smaller or weaker players who are late developers, or players who are simply not technically or tactically strong enough to compete at the desired level. Another decision would be forcing players to specialize in specific positions that will have the most positive impact on the result of the game, and this early specialization will also limit players' ability to play in many different positions and learn and develop a better overall understanding of the game. And finally, the pressure to win will affect a coach's personality and attitude in their communication with players and typically this communication will end up becoming more negative. In the last 10 years, there has been a lot of scientific research conducted in the area of skilled performance and motor learning in an attempt to determine the optimal ways in which people learn and also the ways in which children learn and the ways in which athletes in a sporting context learn how to perform their sports skills. One excellent recent research study, which I cited in my blog post last week, was done by Anne Sear et al. in 2014. And they determined that the optimal way in which people learn is through making mistakes and then autonomously working towards finding a solution to these mistakes. In a soccer context, this type of learning is going to be severely limited, if not completely eliminated, when there is pressure to win and punishment of losing. If you think about it logically, it is easy to understand that if players are constantly afraid to make mistakes because of the fact that they will be punished for those mistakes, and coaches are also afraid to have their players make mistakes because they'll be punished for losing games because of the mistakes, then that type of environment is just not conducive to have individual players learn and perfect their skilled performance and motor learning. The only way to have an optimal learning environment for youth soccer players is for there to be no punishment for making mistakes and thus no punishment for losing games. So the good news is that now in Ontario and Canada almost all of the competitive environments in youth soccer including all of the youth soccer leagues are set up in a way that does not reward winning and does not punish losing. The next step and what really needs to happen is that all of the coaches, parents and players who are competing in these environments need to buy into the model, embrace it, and change their mentality to also shift towards a focus on player development 
and away from a focus on the results of the games. Coaches in these environments can facilitate optimal skill performance and motor learning of their players by making playing time equal, by allowing players to play and participate in all positions on the field, and also by making their communication as positive as possible so that players are never afraid to make mistakes. Parents should limit their discussion of games with their children to the following two questions. The first question should be, did you have fun? And the second question should be, what did you learn? This will put children in a position where they have to think not about the result of the game, who scored goals, or what mistakes they made, but specifically thinking about whether or not the game was fun, and then thinking about what lessons they learned from the mistakes that they made. So in keeping with this mentality, players in these youth soccer competitive environments should not only think about what lessons they've learned from the games that they've played, but should also be encouraged to write them down. A simple strategy would be to take a post-game journal in which a player identifies two or three things that they made mistakes with and could have improved upon, and also two or three things that the team as a whole made mistakes with and could have improved upon. In this way, again, the emphasis of the competition is shifted away completely from the result and towards individual player development as well as how player development impacts team development and team performance. Thanks everybody for watching this edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you'd like more information, you can visit www.soccerfitness.ca or www.soccerfitnessgoals.com.